You know, villains aren't so bad. In fact, sometimes they can be cutie. And that's exactly what we're drawing today. I have often dreamed of a far off place where a great warm cutie of Hades will be waiting for me. That's right, up first we have Hades. He's a fantastic character designed by Disney. I really love the fire hair and the personality that was brought to this character in the film. Made him a very lovable villain. And so I thought maybe today we can make him also a little bit cute. So we worked on getting a nice pose here, nice body shape. I went wide because I thought that would be kind of cute for this character. And gave him, you know, sort of sad eyes. Uh, of course, he's got to have his fire hair. Looking real good. And we sort of gave him that, like, finger pose of, like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to overthrow heaven. <laughs> or whatever. Mount Olympus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Hercules when it came out. Not just because of the song I Can Go the Distance, although wonderful. There's good songs in Hercules, right? Go the Distance, Won't Say I'm in Love, and, um,. What do you call that song? If you want to be a hero, kid, well, whoop de doo uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's a great song. <laughs> Danny DeVito, you know, making it happen. So yeah, we're just working on refining out these shapes with our line art, trying to keep things free and loose, just so that, you know, some of the cute energy comes through in how we are rendering it here looking pretty good who is your favorite disney villain there's a lot of good ones out there so obviously there's a lot of choices to be made uh i really like mother gothel is a really good villain from tangled and i'm a big fan of king candy that's not a very good king candy but you know king candy is very funny from wreck it ralph all right i think we just about have our line out here so let's check out the final reveal of Hades as a cutie. Up next, we have the eye in the sky. That's right. A great eye, lidless, wreathed in flame, and kind of cute. It's Sauron. That's right. We're doing a Sauron next. Uh, when this came up on stream, so what I usually do is I have uh, a wheel and I get people to give suggestions and then I spin the wheel and when someone suggested this, I said out loud, dear lord, I hope not because this feels real tough to make cute and immediately rolled this uh, lovely Sauron and so it was up to me to try to figure it out. I thought sort of a tear-filled eye, uh, lidless breathed in flame, but a little tearful, a little sad would work out nicely and of course instead of like hard awful windows we had to go with some hearts to make it extra extra cute because you know he's not the just the dark lord he's also got feelings <laughs> so yeah we drew in these heart windows and i really like how this one turned out despite me saying i definitely don't want to do it i really liked what we made you can see me starting on the line art here i love lord of the rings you know, as a film franchise, it holds up really well. The style and the vibes of it are really great. You know, it's not a perfect rendition of, you know, a very good and complicated film uh, books. But as a film, it stands up real well. And it has a special place in my heart because I saw them in theaters and I really love them. Have you seen them? And did you see them in theaters? Or am I just old? I might just be old. Don't tell anyone. Uh, we get working here on this eye. And I got to do the reflection in the eye now there are so many styles of eye reflection you can see i started with this like single dot big single dot small but i really wanted the sad watery eye to come through so i end up ultimately working on trying to get even more dramatic water in it and it's really hard to do like i i don't fully understand how you make those choices and so i worked pretty hard on trying to get this to work out here but yes, I love a good Lord of the Rings. And so this is our Sauron. Up next, we have Bill Cipher. Now, Bill Cipher is a triangle with a hat. 
And when you're trying to make something cute, sharp edges are not usually the vibe. So I decided to make Bill Seifler real soft. And so we made him a pudgy little triangle uh, with a big, big old eye, make him look real happy and cute. I think the eye will come in here any second now. We really want to just get that big old eye in there. We gave it long lashes as well, just to add to the, the vibes in general. And we get a nice Bill Cipher energy in that cute, cute eye. You a fan of Gravity Falls? Gravity Falls is one of those shows that everybody talks about, I feel like. And I'm still working on getting through it. I haven't finished season one yet. I'll get there eventually. But we got our Bill Cipher here coming in with his like, oh, I'm just a cute little guy. I could never do anything evil. Uh, and of course he can. Based on the show, I think he certainly can. And so we're working on getting some of this line on in here. I thought at first I wanted to give him a small hat because that would be cuter. But in the end, I think I went for a long hat similar to his original design because it's more Bill Cipher to have the long hat. I also got these nice little arms in here, just sort of like holding in towards his belly saying, hee hee hee, I'm just a simple little guy. Don't worry about me and my plans for the world. And I do like the idea of him sitting. It just sort of um, makes him a little bit more cute. Who's your favorite character from Gravity Falls? Let me know in the comments below. So yeah, we'll get working on the line art here and we'll wrap this up near shortly and we'll check out the final reveal. Next, we have the Joker. Now, the Joker has so many renditions, it's hard to decide what version of the Joker to do, but I, of course, am impartial to, no, I'm partial to even, the Dark Knight Joker. Heath Ledger really pulled off what I think is one of the best Jokers out there. Mind you, it's incredibly difficult to make his character cute because he's got really complicated hair and a really complicated style, but I did my best here, and I think what we got turned out okay. We went for big old eyes and a real wide head and ultimately tried to get some of the style down there. Don't worry too much about the stretching. I think I undo most of it. There we go. The head's not so wide in the end. Yeah, he needs that long purple jacket and uh, scars and all the like. We get working on that nicely here. I think the scars only come in in the coloring as opposed to the line art, so you won't see that for quite a while. But yeah, we wanted to have that sort of playful energy that that character has with some menacing and that wild hair. And it took a little bit to get, but I think I got somewhere that I'm happy with. Are you a fan of Batman stuff? Like, do you like the Joker? Like, the Joker's an incredibly popular character. Obviously, uh, he's done well in all sorts of iterations. I, of course, love the Mark Hamill Joker. He's the one that stands out to me as one of the best. Uh, but the Heath Ledger one does hold a special place in my heart because it was just so intriguing when he came to the screen for the first time. And he really holds the attention well. Mind you, I'm not sure those movies have held up as well as they could over time, but they still are movies that I enjoyed watching back in the day, and maybe that's enough for a film to be. You can see me working on the line art here, trying to decide how to get the Scars. Do you know how he got these scars? I worked on them slowly but surely, and we eventually got there in the coloring. Uh, you can see me starting to work on the hair here, and this is where I really started to encounter some challenges. I wanted to capture that energy that his hair has of being sort of very stringy, very sort of unkempt, but it's difficult to do without overwhelming your image, especially when you're trying to do something cute. Cute often needs to be simple, or at least have some simplicity to it, in its design, and if you go overboard with some of the hair, you end up sort of overcomplicating the image. So you see me trying here to get some lines of hair in there, just so that he has some of the disheveledness that this character brings to the screen. And yeah, I think in the end, this one turns out pretty good. Uh, it definitely evokes the Joker. I'm not sure if it's exactly the Heath Ledger Joker, but I like it nonetheless. Here it is.
And last on our list today, we have Skeletor. That's right, from He-Man. Skeletor, living in his old castle, Grey Skull, and looking real cool, doing all the memes these days, and really fun to design in a cute style. Because he is a very well-designed character, that he evokes himself real well. Lots of great color, lots of great style, and so you can see me trying to make a very bulbous skull here for him. I think I adjusted down a little bit just to get more extreme proportions, which helped to make it even more cute. And then it's a matter of getting that hood in there and getting some of the darkness in and around the character so that we have this base that really works well. Did you watch He-Man growing up? I watched the original a bit, not a lot, because it was obviously a show from the 80s. I'm from the 80s as well, so I wasn't fully grown up until well after the 80s. And my parents didn't love me watching too many violent things. And, you know, though it's not violent by today's standards, it would have been back in the day. You can see me here starting to get a pudgy body together for him. Of course, he's got his skull staff also looking real cute. And I really like the way the proportions of this one turned out with the bulbous head and the rotund body. It really makes this character feel uh, special. So yeah, as we wrap up the line art here, we're just trying to get some of these proportions down the way we want and transition over to the line art. And here we're just trying to maintain some of those playful uh, roundedness that we started with in our sketch. And I think it turns out real, real fun. Are you a He-Man or a She-Ra person? You know, She-Ra obviously has had a much bigger resurgence in recent time with a Netflix show. But He-Man, you know, he was a dude. Obviously, like, when you look at them now, it basically is they made a, uh, a boy show and a girl show, which seems a bit of a misnomer in the long run. But yeah, it's basically the exact same premise, but with, you know, lady strong girl and lady strong, eh, not lady strong boy, and strong boy. Uh, they're both pretty cool. I think my sisters had a Shira action figure. I can't remember though. Are you into action figure toys? I had Ninja Turtle toys and I had Dick Tracy toys that my aunt and uncle had bought me. And uh, they're really fun. I know Dick Tracy toys in the 90s really feels like, you know, it's a bit of a, a bit of a gap between maybe the heyday of Dick Tracy. Do you know who Dick Tracy is? Anyways, I'm getting uh, off topic here. Those are the action figures I had the most of. I had a really cool robot that was a Ninja Turtles robot. I can't remember his name now. Maybe I'll find a picture of him. Maybe not. We'll see. And yeah, I think the line art's getting done here. So we will see you at the final reveal. And that's going to be it for our villains to cuties today. I just love drawing characters as cute versions of themselves. It's always an interesting and exciting journey. Who should I make cute next? Is it more villains? Is it Marvel? Who, who knows? Is it something else altogether? Let me know down in the comments below. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. I am just a small creator. I'm on the march to a thousand subscribers this year, but I need your help to get there. So please share this video, like it, do all the things you need to do. You know how it works. But really, I just want to thank you for being here. It makes me so happy that I get to do this and share my dumb pictures with other people. And I hope that it brings you as much joy as it brings me. For now, that's going to be it. Until next time, keep being awesome. Bye.